Knowing versus owning, folks. Now, this was a premise in a lot of um, training that I went through in my life. And so many people know good information. In fact, if you've got a problem in your life, you probably know um, how to resolve it, but probably not owning what needs to happen. And here's a classic example. Most people that are overweight know what they have to do if they want to lose the weight, and they probably want to lose the weight, but they haven't owned what it is to do that, haven't developed the discipline to do what is necessary to do it. Knowing versus owning. So people that, let's take lockdown, lockdown, um, a lot of people spent a lot of time not doing very much and getting motivated to get more active after that. I mean, I can tell you for certain, I remember my first game of football um, after COVID or between the two lockdowns. They only allowed three aside. I mean, there's the whole idea of personal distancing in five aside football or three aside football. And I felt like I had COVID at the end of it because I was exhausted. I hadn't run for months and months and I, yeah, I, I was having extreme breathing difficulties at the end of that, folks. So, um, knowing versus owning. We know, we often know what the solutions to our problems are in life. We just haven't owned um, the energy or the motivation to do what needs to be done. And it's not a lack of information that kills us. It's not a lack of awareness in a lot of um, equations. It's just the motivation. It's finding that root cause, that leverage, that reason why. So here's an example of leverage. So I remember speaking to a guy who'd been a smoker for 40 years. And the thing that stopped him overnight, overnight, was his daughter complained about his breath. And he said, you know, the look on her face was so disgusted that that was enough to get him to stop instantly smoking. No, not everyone's going to want to stop smoking. Not everybody's going to want to do stuff that the rest of society says is good for us. And if you're going to do it, then do it. But then balance it with something that is a little bit healthier. So occasionally I do smoke. There's a secret, folks. There's a secret. But if I do it... I will go out for an extra walk the next day or I'll do some press ups, I'll do something that I wouldn't normally do to counteract the effect. And if you can do that, if you can take every habit that maybe isn't so good for you and balance it with something that is, then you can walk the middle path. You don't have to be a purist, you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to do the healthiest things all of the time. Um, but what you can do is balance them. And if you do that, folks, your life becomes easier and a lot more sustainable.